Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial, but before we actually get into the tutorial, I want to mention a few things first. So, uh, this is my first edited video, so I've already organized it, planned it, uh, I've already coded the thing I'm going to make, so I'm going to show you a preview in a minute, but I just want to mention what's going on. So, uh, yesterday I did my first Twitch stream, I forgot to have uh, save previous broadcasts on, I've enabled it now, sadly that doesn't bring back the one I did yesterday, but if you do want to check out my live streams from tomorrow onwards, I'm going to try doing them every two days, so I did one yesterday, one tomorrow, uh, I'll try and keep up with that, it depends, maybe weekends that might not be true, but throughout the week it should be. So we're going to be creating a roguelike game, I've already started with the dungeon generation, the code is on my github, link is in the description below, twitch link should also be below or on screen. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Just go check that out if you want to see behind the scenes game development. And obviously you can always check the VODs afterwards, the clips of the streams if you can't watch it while I'm streaming. Yesterday I streamed from 12 till 5 uh, my time, British time. So uh, if you can't get it because of your time zone or you're busy at the time or you're asleep or whatever, then feel free to watch the broadcast afterwards. But I just thought I'd mention that quickly. Now let's get into the video. Okay, so now we're in Unity. Before we actually do any coding, I'm going to show you the preview of the project. So what we've done for the scoreboard system is when you press play, you can see five, or you can tweak that to be whatever you want. Obviously, I'll show you how to tweak everything. Um, five maximum scoreboard entries. So currently you have three. I've done Bib, Bill, Bob, and Barry with their scores. It's in ascending order of price, or, well, not price, sorry, descending order of score. Um, and over here, I've made a little test thing so we can add entries. So if I say, uh, my name is Dapper and I got a score of between these two, maybe like 700. And then I can call the function manually. Obviously, if you implement this in your own game, then you'd uh, call the function from somewhere else. But I, this is just a bare bones project on its own. So you would uh, be able to build this around your game. So if I click add test entry, which will add these two fields, then what it does is it adds it in there, name, it creates the... Uh, UI for it and also in this text file over here not that one uh, In this text file over here it creates the entry there and if I try and add another one It'll just add the same one in the same bit then I add another and it clears off the bottom one Now that guy's gone because I chose a maximum of five high scores So it only stores the top five if your score isn't in the top five range then it doesn't get saved and so on now uh, at the end, I'll be going over some challenges you can do to expand this further. I didn't make this encrypted, but obviously like, I could come along and be like, nah, I actually got like 20,000 points. Now, just for the sake of keeping it neat after cheating it on here, I should probably put that there. But you see the point now I could uh, press play. Well, try and like add a new entry. And then we got Dapper up at the top with 20,000 after it's updated. So. It's very easy to cheat this system currently, but that's one thing you could do. I'll mention that at the end again. I'll give you like a few things that you could try and do, but the main system is what we'll be going over this video. So let's get into that. Before we start the coding, I'd like to thank my patrons with special thanks to Flow State Games, Average Morning, Thomas Huster, Remy Bowdoin, and Phil Baum. Uh, if anyone else would like to help support the channel on Patreon, then the link is in the description below and maybe on screen too. Now we can finally get into the coding. Okay, so now we can get into the coding. Uh, if you'd like to actually have access to the code on the project, then the link will be in the description below for my GitHub page where you can go download the project. If I ever update it and you're following the GitHub project, then you'll get notified about any changes in case I fix some bugs with it or whatever, if people report things. But yeah, we should be good to go. So all I've done is I've renamed some things like scene to scene main, UI, just added some empty game objects for sorting purposes. Let's actually start creating the UI now before we put the code onto it. So. Within the UI, well, we need an empty game object, so let's go drop that there, and we're going to call this uh, system underscore scoreboard, and I'm going to make that a prefab, so let's quickly create a folder called prefabs, and we'll also make one called scripts, because we're not going to need to code, and then inside prefabs, we're going to go drag the system scoreboard just to keep it there. And then inside the scoreboard, what do we want? Well, we want to add a canvas so it can be displayed on the UI. I'm going to change the canvas to be uh, con scale with screen size. So obviously when people are on different resolutions, it fits. Set it to my resolution, drag it to the right so that it stretches that way rather than the other way. And we can remove the graphic ray caster because we don't need to be clicking on this UI. It's just a visual thing. And I'm going to call this canvas underscore scoreboard. Just makes it really easy for later on your searching for things in your scene, you know what you're trying to find, it's much easier. Then under under here we need something to hold all the high scores and organize them uh, vertically. So we'll make an empty game object and I call this uh, holder underscore high scores, holds the high scores. 
And let's go into the scene view so we can actually see what we're doing. Now this is currently a really small object. Let's stretch this to the screen size. And then what we want to do is we want to add a, a vertical layout component. This will uh, present our scores vertically. And then we want to say, let's just add some padding. So I'm going to add 20 to all sides and 20 spacing. And we're going to align to the upper center. And I'm going to set this pivot to one so that it starts, it uh, fits to the top. Otherwise we'll have them floating about in the middle somewhere. Uh, we want the content size fitter. This means that um, rather than when we've got two, one being here and one being here, they actually go for the top down because you can have that if you want, but I don't think it looks very good. And for that to work, we need to tell the vertical fit to be preferred size. So currently it goes as small as possible, uh, but it doesn't really matter because we've, we've got nothing there anyway. Now, to be honest, that's done for that. We've actually created the uh, scoreboard UI. We just need to create the UI for the actual entry that shows uh, the name and the text, well, the name and the score. So we'll do that now. Okay, so for the high score entry, we're gonna make a new game object under the holder, calling it entry underscore uh, high score, just in case you have other high score, or other entries, sorry. And this is gonna be, a, it's gonna have an image on it. And it's gonna have another script that we're gonna write later, but we haven't got it yet, so it's fine. I'm just gonna change this to be uh, some kind of light gray and be kind of transparent just to look nice on there, maybe make it have a bit more alpha. That's fine though. Turn off Raycast target because we're not gonna be clicking on it and that's good to go. And now we wanna set the size. So I'm gonna say the width is 1000 and the height is 150. So that's the size of my thing. And then if I go back to this high scores for the spacing being 20, I actually wanna tweak that to be, at least for my case, for my uh, monotype, if I do 72.5, and then I add some more of these entries. You'll notice how when I get to the five I want, it's perfectly like that. If I change to a different uh, resolution, it'll still work because I've chose the canvas to scale this way rather than the other way, which would change that. So that's all good to go. Now let's delete these extra ones while we're working on it. Uh, just remember, we're gonna be spawning these in, so we need to make them a prefab. So let's uh, select this entry underscore high score, make it a prefab and now we can start adding some text to it. So uh, I'm gonna keep it the same as I did in my project. So then when I put it on GitHub, if you guys are following along, it'll be identical to what I'm doing. So inside here, I'm gonna go and add a UI image. And I'm gonna say that this image goes over here for the anchors. So we're gonna put that there, put that there. And I'm gonna go for 0.4, so 40% of it. And then if I add another image, I'm gonna say that image is from the end and it snaps there. So it's from point uh, four on the X to one. And now with these two images, if I give them padding of 10, so I'm gonna go 10, 10, 10, 10, it gets its own padding inside those anchors. And if I go 10, 10, 10, 10, it gets its own padding inside there. Now, obviously, yeah, again, I wanna pick uh, maybe black and go for a dark, but not too dark. We'll go with that and I'm just gonna uh, copy that. Actually, the hex code won't really uh, help because it doesn't take alpha into consideration, apparently. Hmm. Oh well. It only takes the other values. So I'm going to, sorry, right click and paste component values. So those are st the same color and same everything. You could just manually type it out, but it takes a bit longer. So I'm going to call this uh, image underscore background underscore name, like so. And then um, I'm gonna call this one image underscore background underscore score. Now you might want to display more than just their name and their score. So you can design this UI to dis uh, display maybe uh, the date that it was you know, got on. You can look into, that's an extension you could do. You could find out how to get your system time and save the date maybe in, uh, in here with the high scores. But for this, we're gonna keep it simple just with the name and the score. Now on side here, we want to put, not on side, sorry, inside here, we want to put some text. So I'm going to use Text Mesh Pro. Uh, if you want to use the normal text, you can, but I recommend using Text Mesh Pro. It's built in. If you're on a new version, it should just be there on the drop down. If you're on an old version, then either use text or go get it from the asset store. But most of you should know about Text Mesh Pro. So I'm going to put text underscore, whoops, text underscore name, if I can type. Uh, scale list to fit the box. And then we're going to give it a padding of 10. And then I'm gonna say um, auto size with a max of, I went for about 80. 
just going to keep the same setting as I used. Centered, centered. And then I can put in a name like Dapper. Or maybe you want to put in like, uh, yeah, we'll leave it as Dapper as like the default one. Or maybe you want to put like sample text. So if the name's big, it gets uh, shrunk a bit. And then we might as well duplicate that, go drag it under the score thing so it keeps all the same settings and just call it text underscore score. Now you just want to replace all these with 10 so it moves it to the right place. And now we can put like the score of like, I don't know, 999, 999, 999, just a big score, there you go. So now we've got the UI set up for that. We just want to, well, we've already made this a prefab, so now we can just delete it. Um, just say revert all on here. There we go, it's all good. And we want to override apply on the scoreboard. So now the scoreboard and the high score is all done. So this is all the UI done. Now we just need to get into the coding. Okay, so for the coding, we're going to need to create four different scripts. We're going to need a script to handle the scoreboard, which will do the uh, reading and writing to files, and it will do the displaying on the UI. Then we'll need a script which will store data on a entry, on an entry. So it's going to store name and score, but obviously you might want to store date and some other things. Maybe it's kills to death. So maybe the score is more complicated than just a single number. So it's up to you to tweak these, but I'll show you how to set it up. And then we're going to need a script for the UI that'll sit on the prefab we just made and it'll handle taking in data and putting it on the UI. And then we need one final thing for storing data to save to a file. It needs to, we need to create a data format that can be serialized to our computer to be saved that can then be read when we need to. So we're going to have four different scripts. And I'm just going to create them all now so you can follow along here, but I'm going to speed this up probably. Okay, I've created all of the files. Now let's just pick one of them and open it up in Visual Studio. Okay, so now we're here in Visual Studio. We should start making the scoreboard entry data. Let's do that one first. So we've got scoreboard entry data. We want to change this quite a bit. So first of all, we're gonna put it in a namespace to keep it all neat. So I'm gonna call the namespace dappadino.scoreboards. So all the code to do with scoreboards is gonna be in here. I would call it scoreboard, but because we have a class called scoreboard, we'd get some problems. So we're just gonna leave it as scoreboards. So it's all the scripts to do a scoreboard stuff. Now in here, we're gonna wanna make this a struct, not a class. Uh, we could do it as a class, but I'm deciding to do it as a struct. It's not gonna inherit from mono behavior. It's gonna be very simple. It's just gonna have two variables. We're gonna store a public string entry name and a public int entry score. That's gonna be it for this. We can remove these um, usings. And because we want this to be saved to a file, we need to add the tag serialize, serial is And I can't spell, so I'm just gonna cheat. Um, <laughs> it's the American spelling as well. I think uh, in England we use S's for this kind of word, but Z, I don't know, you have to use Z because it's American. So this means that we can then take this data and format it in a way that can be saved to our computer. And that's this file done. If you want to have uh, other kinds of data on it, like uh, kills, deaths, whatever, you just add an integer for kills or a string for first name, last name, whatever you want to do, just tweak this to be the data that you're going to display in um, your game, basically. Okay, so in this script, we're going to set it up so we can tell Unity how to save our code. Now, our code's very simple, so it might seem pointless to have this script, but believe me, it's like so much harder or almost impossible to save it in any other way. Um, you might think we can just save a list of entries, but you would need a class that has a list of entries and save that class. It's very awkward to save and load a list of things in a file. Um, it's very easy to save one type of class in a file. It's much easier to do that, so we're going to do that. Uh, so namespace, Dapper Dino, it fills in for us, dot scoreboards, it's already there, so that's nice. Put all the code inside there. And then what do we want to do in here? Well, this is also just a, a piece of data, not a mono behavior, it doesn't sit on anything in the scene. So we're gonna remove that, but we're gonna keep it as a class. And the benefit to a class is that we can initialize variables uh, like by default. So we can have a list of our entry data that we just made called high scores maybe and initialize it to a new list of uh, high score data. And that's basically when we're um, loading from the text file, if our text file doesn't exist, we just create a new instance of this class, which just has an empty list of high scores. So if we, you know, if we've never played the game before, we're just gonna have a list of empty high scores, which is good, that's what we want. So this is very simple. We're gonna be saving this to a file. So we need to put serialize, 
a ball. Did I get it right that time? I got it right that time, nice. Okay, so that's that class done. That's two of them done. Nearly there. Now we're going to do the second to last piece of code. The last one for the scoreboard is definitely the longest, so these are really short. This is going to be the code that handles displaying the text to the screen. So we're going to write namespace dappadino.scoreboards. Excuse the police car outside. Not outside, my house anyway. Um, what do we want? This is a mono behavior because it's going to sit on top of that object in the scene. It needs to have some variables. We need to pull in a reference to a text mesh pro UGUI. It's a really annoying name they chose, but basically if you're using text mesh pro for the text, you want to use that data type. If you're using built-in text, you want to just use text, but then you need to import uh, unity engine.ui. But we're going to be using the text mesh pro version. Call it entry name, oops, sorry, entry name text. And then we might as well just copy and paste this line. Actually, you can do, do, you can do control D, can't you? Nope. Um, whatever. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I think I might have disabled it. Entry score text. And we need a function that we call when we create this button. We're going to call it uh, initialize. And we need to pass in some data so this entry knows what to display. So we need to pass in a scoreboard entry data, which is the type we made up here with the name and the score. Obviously, if you have other data, then you'll need to add more fields of UI to uh, put the data into. But we're just going to do entry name text dot text is equal to scoreboard entry data the name. So we're setting the name text to the name. And then we can copy and paste that. And we can set the score text, entry score text, to the entry score. And then because that's an integer, we have to convert it to a string. So it can be displayed on the screen. We can get rid of those using statements that we don't need. And then now we're on to the last script, which is by far the longest one and the most complex. Let's get into it. Okay, the scoreboard. This is going to be fun. It's about 90 lines long, so hopefully you guys uh, don't get too bored doing this. But once we've got it working, we have the fully uh, fledged saving loading system, putting the scores in the right place, removing ones past index 5 or whatever you want it to be. So let's get into that. I'm just going to do the normal setting up the namespace, removing the boilerplate code. So it's all set up here fine. We're going to be using Unity Engine and we're going to be using system, whoops, using system.io, which is input output, because we're going to be writing and reading from files. What do we want to store? Well, we want to have a an integer for the maximum amount of entry. So I'm going to set maximum scoreboard entries to five, but you can set it to be what you want. We also want a transform, which is going to be a reference to the thing, the parent that holds the um, button. So this holder, high, the high scores holder, is what we want reference to here. So we're going to call it high scores holder transform. And then we want um, reference to a game object, which can be a prefab, the scoreboard entry object. I know I don't have to initialize these to null, but I've got into a habit of doing it and I quite like it for some reason, so don't bother commenting below saying that you don't need to do that, because I know. And then we're going to make a little bit here for some variables just for testing, because I don't have an actual game to shove, like to test this on really. So um, we're going to have a private instance of um, the entry data, test entry data. Okay. So in the inspector now, if we go back into it and go to the system underscore scoreboard, add the scoreboard script to it. We can put in some data there to test. So we can put like Nathan, I got 524 points. Um, reference to the holder is there and reference to the um, entry is there. So that's all set up. We can press apply, that's done. If we go to the high score entry, we need to add the entry UI and drag in the text name and the score. That's done. And now we just need to write the logic for the scoreboard. So um, we want to have a path, a save path, basically, where on our computer does it save to? So private string save path. And I'm going to write a getter. And the getter is going to return, first of all, because every computer is different, 
Unity has a built-in thing. I don't know if it's actually Unity. It might be just system. Let's check what it's from. Uh, you know, Unity Engine has a built-in class which handles um, doing things based on different applications. So if I'm on Windows and someone else on Mac or on Linux, or whatever, this will be different because we want it to be dynamic. I don't want to write a Windows style path and then someone on Mac does it and it doesn't work. So if I do application.persistentDataPath, that will take you to your um, percent, I can't type, percent app data percent back local low default company temp. I've called the project temp. So this is where our save files will go. And if you're on a different computer, that will have its own location. But then we also need to put the actual paths I'm going to call, or the file name. So high scores dot JSON or dot TXT or whatever. So whenever we refer to this path, rather than typing that out every single time, we can just say save path and it gets the string. So that's nice. Okay. Uh, when we start, we would like to um, like get the saved scores from the file. And we'd like to update our UI to display it right away with the saved scores. So we need to store the saved scores. So we made that save data object. We've written this, which stores a list of entries. So we're going to call it saved scores. So we're going to need to write a function to get those saved scores. So let's go and do that one now. So to get saved scores, we're going to write a private function that returns type scoreboard save data called get saved scores. So that's going to be happy now. And this code, we're basically going to say, if the file doesn't exist, if, if file dot exists, but I've put an exclamation mark. So if the file doesn't exist for the save path, so if we haven't got it already, then we're going to say file dot create the save path. But then we want to say dot dispose, because if we don't dispose it, what will happen is we'll get an error later on saying this files already use it's already in use and we're trying to like write to it and it says no we can't write to it we're busy so once it's created of it we'll uh, dispose of our usage it's just a thing you have to do to stop you from getting an error so I advise that you do that and then because we know we've just created a blank file we don't have any data in it there's no point reading it so we're just gonna say return a new instance of the save uh, the scoreboard save data which is just an empty list of um, entries but if we do have a save file path, so if um, the file does exist, then we're going to say using stream reader, I'm going to call it stream, is a new stream reader, but a stream reader needs to take in, um, well, it's got many different parameters, but one is a save path, so we're just going to pass in our save path. So we're basically inside these two brackets, we have access to this stream. As soon as we get out of it, it ends, um, and it's a good way to stop... Um, leakages essentially like uh, leaving a file open and forgetting to write the line to close it it's all enclosed within this and all we really want to do is we want to say uh, we want to get a string call it json is stream dot read to end so it's just going to read the whole file and shove all the all the text from the file into this string and from that we can then convert it into this data type because we know we saved it as that data type when we write the save code. So we're going to load it up as that data type. So we can say return JSON utility, which is a class in Unity, from JSON. And inside the uh, braces here, we can type what class it's going to be, what type of data. So scoreboard save data. And then you need to pass in the actual string JSON, which we've just got there. So we're going to pass that string into there and it's going to convert it into the data type we want. And that's the get saved scores. And while we're here, we're going to write another function, void, because it doesn't return anything, called save scores. And it needs to know what to save, so scoreboard save data. So we're going to pass in some save data, it's going to save it for us. So we're going to say using stream writer, because we use stream reader to get it, we need to use stream writer to write it. Call it stream equals a new stream writer with the save path as the location. The JSON, instead of putting it to a file, we're going to get it from a file. So we're going to say equals JSON utility. Oh, no, sorry, this one, we're putting it into a file. We're not reading, we're writing. So we're going to say dot to JSON, uh, our save data. So it's called save data. And you can pass in true or a boolean for pretty print. Um, pretty print just means that it displays the JSON nicely, like how I showed you earlier, like this rather than a mess. Um, and then we're going to say uh, stream dot write json so it's going to write it to that save file 
the data. So that's saving and loading done. Nice. Now we just have to do the logic for um, updating the UI. So we're going to say private void update UI. This update UI needs to know what scores to display. So scoreboard save data, save scores. Or we can just put, yeah, it doesn't matter really. Uh, just leave it as that. We're going to say for each transform, which is just essentially an object in Unity, for each transform child in uh, the holder transform. So basically, if we already if we've added a new entry, we want to delete or destroy all the buttons that are already there, all the entries, and then repopulate it with the new ones. So we can just say destroy child dot game object, and then down here we want to loop through all of our uh, entries and make a button for them. So for each scoreboard uh, entry data high high score in save scores dot high scores. So for everything in that list, we want to instantiate, which means to spawn in, um, the prefab we made, which is an entry object, as a child of the holder transform. And then we want to get the component, let's just put this onto the next line. Uh, we want to get the component entry UI, which is the script we've put on it, and just tell it to initialize, which is what we wrote. It needs some entry data, which is the high score that we're currently on the loop of. So that's going to set up each of these scores with the data they need. So that's the updating UI. Finally, the last function is we need to write a function for adding a uh, an, an adding an entry. So public void add entry takes in a scoreboard entry data, the entry to add. And this handles the logic now of actually putting the entry into the list and checking if it should be there. So we're going to say scoreboard save data. We're just going to copy that line actually. So we're going to get the saved scores. We're going to store a boolean for whether the score has been added yet. So score added equals false. And now we're going to loop through all of the scores that we've loaded. So for int i is less than save scores dot high scores dot count. So we're going to loop through all the high scores. And if um, the if the scoreboard entry data dot score. So if the score we're trying to add is greater than the save scores dot high scores i, so the current one we're checking. Then we found one we can get put into. Uh, so we're going to say save scores dot high scores dot insert. So we're going to put it into the list at where we're going to put it in at i because that's the position we're currently checking. That's where we want to go. And we want to put in scoreboard entry data. And then we want to say score added equals true because we've added the score and break out of the loop because we don't want to add it in every single slot after this one we only want to add it once and after that loop we then want to check if the, it's been added or not because maybe our score um, maybe there's only three things in the list and there's a five maximum so uh, it should just go into the fourth place which is an empty slot so if the score hasn't been added and the save score the high score dot count is less than the maximum so if we've actually still got some space left then we want to say saved scores dot high scores dot add we're going to add to the list scoreboard entry data which is that cool and finally um, if now we are on um, too many if we're on too many entries then we want to say save scores dot high scores dot remove range. So we want to remove every entry from uh, the max entries index. And then we want to do the actual um, count, which would be the save scores dot count minus the maximum. You just want to make sure you got those numbers right. Otherwise, you'll get an error saying um, out of range or something along those lines. Whoops, just tabbed out. Um, and all we need to do now once we're done is we're going to say, all right, update the UI with the saved scores and save scores. We want to actually save them now. So save scores, saved scores. And that's it now. Okay, we've got through it all. So let's go do a test. And if it works, then we can end the video there. Um, we can also, you can also go download this off the project if you need to from GitHub, but let's give it a go. So if I press play and we press 
Um, oh, sorry, no. So for us to actually do the test, like, I'm sure this works now, but we need to actually write a tiny bit of code to do our test. So we're going to go back to the code and we're going to say, um, we're going to write a function just for doing a test. So under the start, but above add entry, we're going to say public void add test entry, which takes in no parameters. And it's just going to say call add entry. And with add entry, we're going to say, um, we want to, want to add a new, well, entry. Actually, no, we just want to add our um, test entry data. That's really all this function is going to do. And we're going to write context menu above it and say, like, add test entry. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to call a function from inside Unity without having to write code to do that. So if we actually like look now, if you right click, you can see that. If you call it now, you might get some problems because you can add stuff in uh, when you're not running, but you can't remove stuff. So if we click add test entry. Uh, we've clearly forgotten to set something somewhere. So something is not set. The saved scores. So if we go back to our hit thing here, we've got high scores somewhere over screen. Here it is. So let's have a gun. Okay, so I found the problem. The problem was that uh, if I press play, we get an error, right? Because it says there's a missing reference somewhere. But if I delete the file and then start adding, it works just fine. You can put in the different scores, change the name, try and add an entry. It adds it to the right place. You go add a higher score, it adds it at the top, and so on. So the actual system works. There's only one last, one last little thing we need to do. Uh, in the code, I made a silly mistake where what we do is we say, get the save scores update at the start which would work if there already were save scores, but if they're not, we actually need to uh, do this and then we need to save it right away. Because if we, when we save, uh, that's when we take our data and put it to the file. So we need to say, um, just like down here, sorry, uh, save scores, we need to say save scores, like so, saved scores. Doesn't matter if you do it before or after the UI, I think I'll do it after the UI so it's consistent with what it looks like down there. But yeah, this is the end now. So if I delete the file and then press play, we shouldn't get an error. Should go away. That's gone away. We start adding scores and it works. So great. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's probably a longer one, but then again, when I cut out bits of me messing around, then obviously it might not be that long. Uh, I did. I hope you liked the video. I hope you guys check out the stream tomorrow. Link is in the description below, as I mentioned already. Uh, help me out on Patreon if you would like to do so. Join the Discord server. Link is in the description below. Apart from that, thanks for watching and goodbye.